Hi everyone, a very good evening to all of you and welcome to your board paper analysis of biology. So today was a biology board paper. Hi Roshan, I hope you are doing great. And today we'll be discussing how it was and uh, whether it was a bit different from last year paper or whether it was on a similar lines and what were the key points in the paper, right? So we'll be discussing everything and I hope everyone is here with me. Hi Mayank, hi PR, okay, you find it pretty easy. Well, okay, let us move ahead and let us see what kind of a paper we have got, right? So let us begin, okay. So let us see what was the weightage of the paper and how the things were arranged. Hi Vedan, okay, you say paper was very easy and so did Raj Lakshmi. Well, I am here about to discuss the set three of Delhi region. Right, and believe me, it was an above average paper compared to an All India paper. So All India paper was comparatively bit on an easier line. Yes, Rekha, but your set three of Delhi region is the paper which I will be discussing here and all sets of Delhi region were pretty difficult and there were quite a good number of questions that were various, that were uh, varying from one set to another. Right, so let's move ahead. Hi, Abdul, good evening. And over here, we all know the pattern. In total, we have 27 questions, right? The first five questions are all one markers. And there were two questions with a choice, with an internal choice over there, right? And then we have uh, section B. And in section B, we have got seven questions. Each question, all right, Kushal, that's great. And each question over here of section B is again uh, of a two mark, right? And there was only one question with the internal choice. And if I come down to your section C, which was the most trickiest one in today's paper, of especially of Delhi region, right of the T. And in Delhi region paper, there were four questions with internal choices, especially in your set three, right? Then if I come down to your long answer questions, there are all five markers. We know that they are present in our section D. And all the questions, as usual, were pretty straightforward, all of them have got an internal choice. There is no doubt about it. And they were on the very predictable lines, right? So let us discuss the paper and let us discuss the things one by one and let us move ahead. Okay. So basically my first chapter was of reproduction. We know that is our first unit and that carried in fact a lot of weightage as you can see. So there were two five marker questions Right, and these two questions were of internal choice. Right, one on human reproduction was there, one on sexual reproduction in flowering plants, and that is in set three of your uh, daily region. Right, and then we have the next unit, which is basically of uh, inheritance and evolution. Three chapters are covered over here, and you can see that also had a lot of weightage in today's paper. Right, and the interesting thing about today's paper, it was all. Uh, basically your comprehension base and there were very few questions which were directly you can say simply retention based right like the previous year question papers it has very little to do with pure retention and most of the questions were application based right especially of daily region so we can see the weightage over here and if i come down to your next section human health and disease in my uh, unit uh, in my set three there was no weightage Right, there was no question of human health and disease, but in set one, there was a question regarding the difference between uh, the T lymphocytes and the B lymphocytes. Right, and uh, uh, that was a typical question of human health and disease. Then, in strategies for enhancement in food production, there was no direct question related to uh, retention, but there were indirect questions related to how uh, related to beekeeping and other stuff. Right, yes, very interesting. Daily region sets were pretty tough. Right, compared to the All India ones. Right, and microbes in human welfare, again, had a lot of weightage, as you can see over here. Right, a lot of weightage, and I think there is some error over here. It shouldn't be 18. Anyways, let's move ahead. So, moving forward. Okay. So, we can see in my next section, biotechnology and its application also. 
there were few questions which were asked okay so i guess that is a, a weightage breakdown right and overall the percentage of easy questions or 30 percent questions were pretty easy right straightforward direct questions right okay Aditi, that's great because you have got an all india region paper right all those who attempted the daily region paper would have found it pretty tough compared to the previous years there were very few direct questions and very few easy questions over there compared to the previous years right and i'm discussing our analysis based on the daily region uh, paper so average questions 50 percent of the paper was almost average right and then we have got almost 20 percent of the paper which is pretty difficult right the same can be reflected over here in your pie chart and okay well 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 Aaron, we are going to put up the uh, solutions for your foreign papers also right so just wait and uh, watch the there is a link in the description where all the paper solutions will be given to you right okay yes that will be there on a live session too okay so overall you can see there were nine questions that were pretty easy there were 13 questions that were difficult approximately 50 percent of the paper was average right and there were five questions which are pretty difficult that means 18.5 percent okay this is all pure analysis and let's jump down to our questions over here right and moving forward okay so can any one of you tell me there was a little bit of difficulty in one of the questions question number 15 or question number 16 of delhi region so did any one of you able to find out the difficulty anyways we'll be discussing it so this is the comparison of this year paper compared to the last year papers right this is all just flow chart and diagrams i'm not much interested in it and coming to the pattern the pattern is almost same there is no change in the pattern right there was more internal choice questions the paper was definitely above average three marks questions were lengthier than the average questions right so they made the paper pretty lengthy and there were very few direct questions from ncrt 100 percent of the questions were definitely taught by us during the live classes 60 percent of the questions are from ask and answer definitely okay let's move ahead and let us discuss the paper and the first point that i would like to emphasize over here is your question number 15 or 16 depending on the set that you have got right especially if you are a daily region student and in my question number 15 so the first question seems to be fine but if i come down to the choice second one over here so does it look like an rna molecule first and foremost three prime and has not been mentioned and in rna all this t has to be replaced with a u over here right so there is this ambiguity over there in uh, all the sets of daily region i don't know whether others have also noticed it or others have also got the same uh, issue but this was an issue with the paper of the daily region and this is one of the points of ambiguity i hope everyone is able to note it so if you have attempted this question definitely you are going to get a little bit of weightage or a benefit of doubt right because the question itself had a little bit of ambiguity instead of you they have mentioned t so i hope the rest is all pretty much sorted right and let us discuss few questions turn by turn now and i hope everyone is here with me and okay hello sasan that's a great name and moving forward the question number one was again a very indirect question and it talks about meiosis in haploid organisms right and in haploid organisms we know they will form haploid gametes right the gametes will fuse during fertilization and they will form a diploid organism and during this diploid stage the diploid stage will undergo meiosis again to give rise to your haploid organisms right so this is where meiosis occurs in the life cycle of a haploid organism yes Aditi, yes yes since there is an ambiguity in the question you will be given a benefit of doubt although the ambiguity is quite slight right instead of t they should have written a u over there right so that is the problem over there okay the second question is also pretty easy the number of chromosomes in a drone and a worker honeybee we know 
workers are a result of fertilization drones are achieved parthenogenetically right so therefore the number of uh, chromosomes in the drones are haploid right they are all haploid whereas your uh, workers are diploid organisms that is something pretty much clear to us nothing difficult then what of flocks which are formed during secondary treatment of sewage i think we all know it flocks are your meshwork of fungal hyphae with the bacteria right which helps in uh, oxidative degeneration of the uh, sewage and right any two places where methanogens are present they are found in cattle gut they are found in the cattle dung they are found in your uh, sewage treatment plants right and that is the primary question i am discussing set 3 of daily region neuroprotective fungicide ascariasis my god what a wonderful name you have got okay <laughs> name the layer of the atmosphere that is associated with good ozone good ozone protects us from the uh, basically harmful ultraviolet radiation of the sun and that will basically uh, be of lower stratosphere right we know that pretty well and what is the interaction between an orchid plant and a forest tree we know it is a case of commensalism because orchids which grow over other plants do not cause any sort of harm to them right so this is something pretty straightforward then we have a certain question over here which simply talks about what will be the outcome of a certain punnett square right and in this case i can simply represent a mono hybrid mendelian cross up to the f2 generation and that should do it so the question has not been framed very properly over here but still that is what we can come up with okay so it is said epomix says the type of asexual reproduction justify this is the very standard question right although not very often asked but we all know what is epomix says and why it is a type of asexual reproduction for glycolysis krebs cycles only flow chart is enough uh, well 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 five or five marks question the flow chart itself will not suffice right see the flow chart itself will not suffice at least write down a paragraph where does glycolysis occur and where does krebs cycle occurs under what circumstances uh, the product of glycolysis goes into the krebs cycle right so write a little bit about uh, both of them and i am pretty sure you will be getting your five marks <coughs> okay mention four significant services that a forest ecosystem provide us this is pretty easy right and the mutualistic organisms tend to if coevolve together right and if one is lost in an environment the other is also lost we can uh, explain that with the help of an example that is also very easy right so i'm not discussing the whole paper in case anyone has got any specific query please do let me know sir oogenesis flow chart yes yes when it comes to spermatogenesis and oogenesis the best way is to describe the things with the help of a flow chart right and if you are a daily read student and if you have got a daily region set there were very specific questions regarding uh, human uh, reproduction right in a five marks question there were very specific questions over there okay so then we have another question right the steps in sequence is carried in multiple ovulation um, uh, embryo transfer technology that is m o e t right and m o e t has been discussed in two places in enhancement of food resources as well as first in your reproductive technologies <clears throat> ARTs. So in both the places, MOET has been mentioned. So that is going to be my answer: multiple ovulation embryo transfer and the whole steps of it. I can delineate over here very clear. Okay. So let's move ahead. All the questions are pretty easy without wasting much time. We have another fifteen minutes to go by, and looks like everyone is pretty quiet. No, uh, any specific query which is coming up to me, and then we have another interesting question. how does a bisexual flowering plant ensures cross pollination right so over here we are going to talk about outbreeding devices right so there are various outbreeding devices and there is a full length paragraph over there paragraph or a two in your ncert so that can be utilized over here right there is also a question somewhere which talks about how you are going to prevent uh, self pollination and ensure cross pollination in your <clears throat> monaceous plants right so how you are going to achieve that so that is something we have to talk about 
so that is a very interesting question and in uh, there is a question regarding potato and uh, i think uh, papaya right so where emasculation will be required uh, and where emasculation will not be required yes set one was very easy okay of which region set one of which region okay so let's move ahead and let's discuss okay this question number 15 we have already discussed where is the ambiguity over here right and these questions you can see they are pretty lengthy they also require diagrams so that might have taken a lot of your time and effort and then we have another interesting thing over here rearrange the following from the late geological periods the carboniferous silurian and the jurassic right so first we have the silurian then we have the carboniferous and finally the jurassic period right and we know periods are uh, basically a sub part of a uh, of a uh, what epoch and epochs are a sub part of a era right eras eons and all so all those things we must be very much clear with so which one is the most common type of bioreactor used well it depends on your need right you can have a continuous uh, batch reactor uh, you can use a continuous type of a bioreactor or a batch reactor generally it is the steerer the bioreactor with a constant steering is very commonly used okay let's move ahead so another question is effluent from the primary treatment of sewage is passed for secondary treatment explain the process till the water is ready to be this is a very standard and a typical question which has been asked even in the previous years right so this is a very standard question remember few questions in biology have been pet few questions like on spermatogenesis oogenesis male reproductive system female reproductive system right this question on sewage treatment these are some of the pet questions which are always asked <coughs> okay now this is a very interesting question in the elmain with which the girls are suffering so we are talking about skid over here right and it is ada adenosine deaminase deficiency which leads to skid the girl a must be given or uh, will be given the hormonal treatment pretty often and thus she needs to come up to the doctor over and over again right even if her lymphocytes or you can say are uh, uh, basically hematopoietic stem cells are basically uh, altered with a uh, with a gene insert right so that they can start producing adenosine deaminase but still you know this hematopoietic stem cells will be replaced over a period of time and then again she needs to go in for a fresh infusion of this hematopoietic stem cells in her bone marrow right so this cannot be a permanent treatment the permanent cure could be simply genetic therapy or gene therapy in the embryo itself <coughs> so again we have to draw a well labeled uh, diagram of the accessory drugs in the human male reproductive system you can draw rete testes right then we have the epididymis vas deferens the copulatory duct the urethra all these are a system of tubes just to transfer the sperms to the outside right so all those will form your accessory Uh, reproductive ducts right of course not the seminiferous tubules because seminiferous tubules are the main tubes where your spermatogenesis occurs right okay then we have a choice over here we can do a, a sectional view of the ovary so this is how it will appear i hope this is all pretty simple anyone has got any query please ask me quickly we'll move over to the next set we have another 11 minutes to go by <clears throat> okay so then uh, this is a typical question a very common one define or compare any three ways the chromosomal theory of inheritance is proposed by certain bavary with the experimental results of the mendel right so how the two things are aligning and based on that how did they came up to the conclusion of chromosomal theory of inheritance that the genes are indeed located on the chromosomes right so how did they come up with that explanation we'll have to discuss that and again we can discuss over here either morgan's experiment on linkage and recombination and based on that how did alfred was able to go in for gene mapping right so this is a bit typical one especially the second or the b part but it is not that typical again based on the recombination frequency of the two genes you can define how far are they on the same chromosome and that helps in gene mapping 
Okay. Let's move ahead and let's see the next one. And the next question simply talks about, again, describe the formation of recombinant DNA by the action of eco R1. This is a very simple one. You can exemplify it with the help of a diagram, right? So a diagram is a very beautiful way to gain marks in biology. And it is pretty much, you can say, a mandatory thing. Okay, and describe the whole process of gene amplification using your PCR technique. We have done this. It is there in your NCRT. There is nothing new about it. The few steps of denaturation and leading, extension, right? And repetition of the cycles, more number of times leading to amplification of the required DNA segment, right? Of course, we know we do require the primers over here. And then the next question. So, Explain any two most important levels of biological organization showing biodiversity with the help of an example. Well, 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 this is also very easy. The solutions are there even in the link which is given in the description and all the solutions will be there with you for all the sets as promised, right? So don't worry, just go to the link over there in the description and the things will be done. Sir, I believe this set which you are discussing Okay, okay. Well, well, I don't think it is easy. Most of the questions are pretty indirect and there are no direct retention based questions involved over here. Right. So some of the differences between spermatogenesis and oogenesis, that is what we have to mark in the next question solution. And of course, the differences we all have listed down over here. Right. So I guess that is it with a set two or sorry, set three of the daily region. And from now on, I will be moving on to our all India set. Let us discuss few questions from there also. And let's move ahead, right? So it will be a bit of a thing to discuss that also. Okay. And here comes our all India paper, set three again. So what do X and Y represent in the transcription unit of the DNA molecule shown? Okay. So the figure is missing over here. And how are the members of genus? Glomus useful to organic farmers. I think all these are some of the questions which are pretty typical or pretty easy, I can say. So, do, so does anyone has got any query in any of these questions? Please do let me know. And here I'm coming up with a few more. The solutions are not listed over here in this PDF. The solutions are there in the link, which is given over there in the description. So humans are categorized as regulators. So what is the meaning of the word regulator? Right. We have learned about the confirmers, the regulators, and uh, how they are able to maintain their constant body temperature. We have to discuss that. All right, Aditya, that's OK. That's great. OK. So you are given a tall pea plant and asked to find its genotype. So we will go in for what kind of crossing? We'll go in for a test cross and cross your tall pea plant with the uh, dwarf one, right? Which is homozygous recessive. Shall I write five marks in short? Well, 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 five marks question does require elaborate explanation, right? First and foremost, most of the five marks questions, Priya, will require a good amount of diagrams, if possible. And once the diagrams are there, you need to give up a little bit of writing, right? So remember the question paper was slightly lengthy of Delhi region and was slightly tricky to the average. Okay, so no query as of now. That's great. <coughs> so again, we have a question on mode, right? As it was there in the daily region paper, paper. Okay, and here is an interesting one, slightly different. How do we measure the population density of a fish in a lake, right? So this is pretty simple, pretty easy. The method is very uh, nicely explained in your NCRT, in your first chapter of uh, the unit ecosystem itself. Okay, draw a stable human age pyramid. So we have to draw a stable pyramid and discuss its chief characteristic. What is cryopreservation? Of course, preserving things in liquid nitrogen or in cold so that they don't go bad. That is cryopreservation, right? This way we can preserve pollen, we can preserve tissues of various organisms, their cells, our fruits and vegetables, of course, we go in for their cryopreservation also. How can a childless couple be held by the following assisted reproductive technology using gift 
or cytoplasmic sperm injection well this is all very simple very straight forward in book the content is more shall i cut short and write the answer priya see for a five marks question you must have at least 80 to 120 words answer right so if you are putting up a diagram for a five marks question a well labeled in a nice and elaborate diagram that serves half of the purpose right so another 50 to 60 words of explanation will do the stuff okay i hope that is it and with this we'll all close right and wrap it off and call it a day and that was all for today i guess so let us wind it up if no one has got any question or query So that is it. I guess that is it, guys. Bye bye. See you all again. Has got any query? Thank you.